Alrighty, hello everybody. Welcome back to Coastlines Drive version 2.2.1. But more specific, or more generally, welcome back to Beyond All Reason Aviates. Got a fantastic game for you here today. A lot of incredible stuff happens. Uh, mostly important lessons <laughs> on why you should have air power. Uh, but yeah, it's just a fantastic game. Very, very much like World War One, I, I would guess, <laughs> just because of the way you know it gets really, really attritiony. That's not a word, but we'll pretend it is in some parts of the game. But in other parts, well, it's a, a very, very strong push, we'll say. Like like in the um, Ottoman region of the conflict, right? With the British, right? There we go. We're making analogies. Hope you guys are having a great day. So let's get into this. Starting with the cool color team. Leading the cool color team is AD or smiley face in the blue playing Armada here. Going to be absolutely killing it today, I'm sure. I think they've been featuring in like every single game. It's not on purpose. I just like the replay manager just likes to have them show up. I'm sure they also play a lot too. Maybe that's a reason. But yeah, fantastic player. Excited to see them play. Garbager here, which I don't think I've ever seen play before, is going to be light green. Playing Romano as well, starting with that vehicle lab in the north side of the map. Or I guess south side. Oh, I do have my mini map flipped. Isn't that embarrassing? <laughs> yeah, south side of the map there. Smiley faces in the north. Moving over to the warm color team, we have Punjiba, Punjiba, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, in the red there, playing Cortex here, 30 TS from Australia, I'm excited to see them play as well, again, haven't seen them, and then Axis here in the yellow, TS 29, and from the great state of America, let's go, going to be our air power for the warm color team, really interesting comp, so Smiley Face really stands out as kind of like the best player in the whole lobby by a very, very wide margin here. Um, I haven't done the calculations yet, but I'd be interested to see what the average TS scores are. So I'll be putting those up shortly. Uh, but I imagine if they might not be super close. Um, obviously, the the game will try to compensate the you know team with not the top player as best as it can. But sometimes, sometimes that TS, you know, sometimes when you just got a really good player, you just got a really good player. Now, like if you have like eight awful players, are they going to be able to beat Stardom? Who knows? Maybe not. Maybe not. But yeah, I mean this map is beautiful. Really gorgeous, fantastic contrast, although this rover just running over these poor ca cactuses, cacti. You know, I'm always interested in, like, what the real scale of this game is. Mostly because, like, so some people are like, oh yeah, the, or like in the original Total Annihilation, like, the grunt is the size of, like, a skyscraper or something crazy like that. And then in this game, you have, like, little rovers running over cactuses, right, that are, like, twice as tall as them. So, obviously, they're different games, you know, Total Annihilation and Beyond All Reason. But, you know, it's always a little interesting thought concept there. So, Zyka going to be moving out with the Hercules Air Transport. Now, they believe they would be a, have been gifted that air transport by Axis, who is also starting off with the Whirlwind Bomber as well. Uh, so, a little quick bombing runs, grabbing some Xs up north there for themselves. And who is our, our air player for the uh, Cool Color team? is going to be Lazy Boy. Hopefully, they're not too lazy. 15 TS from America. So, not super experienced. Um, they, they have a, some chevrons there. I'll be interested to see how that goes. They're also going Armada Air, uh, whereas Axis is Cortex Air. You know, not entirely sure you know, which matchup is favored and that I, I, if I remember correctly, which I'm probably not, I think our Armada is favored T2 air and Cortex is favored T1 air just in terms of fighters, uh, especially in terms of, you know, the atomic bomber for Armada is just such, such a good unit. Although they have been making efforts to buff the, um, the dragon there for Cortex. So it's not like Cortex is without its merits. And of course, oh, they do also have shurikens for that T1 matchup. So I, I do believe it's Cortex is better for a T1 air, but you know, I'm sure both can be used quite effectively. And again, stuff like that with matchups is only ever really coming into play with like very, very high level play. Like if you're 15 TS, it, it doesn't matter. Let's be real. All right, so Bomber going to be going down there for Axis. Unfortunately, didn't make it through. No early bombing runs for the Warm Color team. No easy wins there. Some scouts getting by, or some grunts getting by for Cruising Bean. Interesting, interesting name there. Look how many American players on the Cool Color team, by the way. It's crazy. We do have Taxation is Theft. Very uh, American name. Uh, going to be losing their commander down there. Eat. Eat indeed. Oh, no. They're going to be stealing your commander. Forget about taxes. All right, Land Pickle and Smiley going at it here. Yeah, and it's kind of interesting. This game is going to be kind of yin and yang again. Uh, much like the last map, I don't remember the name. 
Uh, planes and passes, there you go. In the center, it's very, very much heavy on terrain, whereas like, you know, north and southern, <laughs> north and southern, north and southern regions are quite flat or more flat, meaning that it's easier for troops to bypass those uh, areas and we're gonna be seeing more attacks there, I'm sure. And also because you can see Smiley Face much better than Land Pickle. No, no offense, just has, you know, much more games under their belt. Um, but also in the south here, you know, you have the top, some of the top warm color team players going against some of the, uh, well, actually Garbage is uh, second place, but some of the lower rated um, cool color team players like Riska, you know, they're doing their best, but uh, Punjiba is, is moving through it quite rapidly here. Yeah, just really excited to get this game underway, see what's going to be going on. And that purple commander is again reclaimed by uh, by the warm colored team, it looks like. Yeah, very, very far ahead there. We're going to be resurrecting some pawns. Great to see, you know, reclaimed bots out so early in the game already. I mean, it's just really great to see them out in general. <laughs> Sometimes we have problems, uh, you know, with like lower tier players just not making reclaimed bots. Which is really unfortunate because it's one of the best or most important things to have in the game. Oh gosh, that poor airplane. <laughs> uh, you know, they really boost your economy. You're allowed to revive units with them. Yada yada. They're just fantastic. I've actually been playing a little bit of 0k recently. It's the only other TA I've gotten into besides uh, Beyond a Reason and uh, Forge Lines Forever. I've been really enjoying it. It's quite an interesting game. Very, very much different than Beyond a Reason. Um, I believe it's more inspired by... Um, you know, Forged Alliance, you know, the Sprim Commander games, but I'm not entirely sure on that. I don't really know all the lore between all these, you know, different games. Uh, but it's quite similar to Beyond a Reason in a lot of ways, quite different than some others. Uh, for one, the economy is very different, but also they have no T2 plants. So I was kind of, kind of wondering how I'm going to like, where the better units are and stuff like that. But, uh, some factories are just inherently better than others. So, uh, but it's also harder to make them early on. So yeah, I'm dying. Land Pickle, poor guy, absolutely getting roasted by smiley face here just getting overwhelmed by a ton of rocket bots um and yeah i mean their economies are yeah not not even close smiley has eight more metal this early on in the game <laughs> and it's looking like they're only only going to be grabbing more metal there just passing another mechs thunderdome here in the center cruising being getting pushed back by some of zyka's rocket bots saddam oh saddam oh no from canada new saddam lore activated Boy, I didn't know that. Governor gonna be making a laser tower here, fighting garbager. You know, also I got a comment from somebody, or actually, it's it's a comment I get kind of frequently. It's like, why don't you ever finish your battles? You know, when you're spectating, and I, you know, it's a fair, it's fair enough. Um, but battles don't really ever finish, and beyond a reason. Like, there's like infinite reinforcements, stuff's always going on, and sometimes that battle just doesn't become that important anymore. And I hate for us to miss a moment. Uh, you know, just to see a couple more grunts kill each other, which I'm sure we've seen many other times before. But yeah, I'll do my best. I'll do my best. My darndest to make sure that happens, as I just, you know, don't do it. Anyways, <laughs> Grunt v. Pond battle going on here. Battle for the ages. Mex, uh, yeah, Mex is going to be going down for Zyka there due to Smiley's pawns. And they're going to be beating a hasty retreat as they are now outgunned by these grunts. They have made some changes, though. Pawns are now faster than grunts with lower range, so they're able to kind of dive in and out. But in any prolonged conflict, uh, you know, I think grunts are a little bit easier to maneuver, a little bit more forgiving. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, when you're a newer player, stuff like that might not matter to you, but it's always interesting to think about. Cruising Bean has a really nice line up here. Unfortunately, they're a little bit far forward, right? I mean, Saddam <laughs> is right here, right? So he's kind of fighting. He's fighting this way, but he's turned this way. There we go. He's going to be moving his unit line around. Yeah, you hate to see it when the when the end of your line is just getting wrecked. But then Zyga comes in from the other side. So you're really between a rock and a hard place. Or between two small hills, we'll say. A label. Yeah, I definitely want to do that. Look at that hill. Nice laser tower position. You gotta love, got to love some good artillery there for sure. Yeah, Panjiba um, trying to make a breakthrough here. And honestly, they're in a really, really good position to do so. Um, you have Bo Biden. Oh my gosh, Joe Biden and Saddam on the same team. <laughs> what has become of this land? Okay. Anyways, um, he's a, they're in a, just in a great position to push through because Bo Biden can support them right here. Although they are moving back due to taxation is thefts shenanigans, which are actually really, really helpful, uh, for that cool color team. Um, yeah, risk. Rasika trying to uh, trying to hold back the horde. Got to get some resbots up here, man. 1.1 thousand 
metal reclaim sitting on the field. Almost a commander's worth of metal just sitting right there. Unclaimed. And uh, yeah, Smiley Face just absolutely wrecking uh, everything in the north here. Support to buy some air power from Lazy Boy. Lazy Boy seems to doing, be doing well on the air front. Um, definitely has more fighters than Axis. Um, although, you know, none of the fighters can be used offensively quite yet. Um, just because there's no bombers around, right? But we'll see. Garbager, um, trying to fortify with some of these Dragon's Teeth. You know, I, I've said it many times before, but not my favorite strat. Just because, you know... You're boxing yourself in too, right? Walls are impassable for both sides, and they also, they just die so quick, man. Uh, it's kind of difficult to balance walls, because if they're too difficult to break through, it is it is just going to be a slog every game. But if they're too easy to break through, I think there's really not a lot of point in making them. And I think that's kind of where the where we're at right now. Um, but that's just my opinion, of course. That's just a theory, a game theory. But yeah, Garbager, going to be trying to hold the line. You know, not a bad idea. They are dealing with you know, Governor and kind of Punjiba if they decide to, you know, swoop around. So they got to be prepared for any, yeah, complication. They do have some stouts out here, but not a large army, that's for sure. Rusika and Stanky B trying to hold the line here. I mean, they're just, yeah, feet away from, uh, from poor taxation's base or, or theft's base. <laughs> what would they rather be called? Probably theft. You know, they don't seem big on taxation. Not sure where I got that from. Yeah, Bo Biden and Saddam just sitting here, unfortunately. They really could be going in. And Cruising Bean managing to beat Bath both both Zyka and Saddam. Looks like they're just going to be bypassing Saddam, although their commander's in a little bit of a tricky spot if Saddam ever wants to, you know, move west a little bit. I'm sure I'm going to get demonetized for mentioning Saddam. It's just great. Just great, man. How could Beyond a Reason do this to me? They don't know about my super successful YouTube channel? I mean, I make a lot of money on here. It's... A little disrespectful, but I'll let it pass. Punjiba's commander getting a bit low on health there. Going to be moving back slightly. Governor up here to assist as well. They're also only at half health. Going to be grabbing a little bit of reclaim. Uh, yeah, getting a little bit greedy there. Going for a bit more. Uh, Rasika and Stakey B kind of stabilizing at this point. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'd say they're stabilized. Not too much threat of breaking through, although we do have some more thugs joining the battlefield with their long range. They're uh, really a compliment to those Whistler trucks, but uh, some stouts going in. <laughs> Not a compliment to those Whistler trucks. And unfortunately, the Jane is going down, which is really the only thing that could deal with these stouts here. Yeah, you hate to see it. Garbage's commander coming up as well. Going to be going on the offensive. They got the south locked down with those walls, I guess. And they are, you know, they're not asking around. Lots of stouts out here for Zika now. Very, very good. And since the, you know, governor's units are clumped up, they're just getting all that AoE damage. Yeah, right down the pipe. Unfortunate. <laughs> Little army for governor goes down. Might even lose their commander if they're not careful, but they are walking it back. And uh, Rizika does not pursue. Imagine I'm saying the name wrong the whole time. That's never happened before. <laughs> uh, they have, now the thugs are coming out, though. Thugs are, are generally decent against tanks. They have good AoE. They have better range, although they are slower, which is impressive to be slower than a medium tank. And yet they manage it. As a bot, I should say, as a bot. Taxation holding up both Bo Biden um, and Cruising Bean. Yeah, oh my gosh, Saddam just got cleared out of the center here. Luckily, their commander is out, though. Um, but yeah, Taxation and Cruising Bean really, really locking down the center there. Zyka hasn't had much of a presence this whole game. They're trying to, their best to claw back there, I imagine. Yeah, again, whole commander's worth of metal on the field there. Governor is reclaiming. It's good to see. Uh, Rasika's reclaiming as well, but no res bots. That's the main thing. Um, which... They would be a little bit vulnerable in this situation, uh, to be fair. But what's well, a couple of res bots compared to, you know, oh my gosh, Governor's Commander going down there to some, you know, well-timed Janus's. Oh, just a fantastic unit. Really, really high damage. Of course, they do have that really long reload time as well. But great damage, great AoE, fast enough. They're just a fantastic unit. So, Governor's Commander on the field there. Who's going to be reclaiming it first? Looks like Punjiba would like to. Going to be grabbing a laser tower first. Surprised Rasika is not going out. Normally, the player that wins the engagement is first to head off and secure that commander, but it is a bit of a contested area right now. I thought that metal drains quick for sure. Uh, Stanky just cloaked in the back here. Not sure why you'd waste this energy. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you're you waste a ton of energy, especially when you're moving. Yeah, I think they just lost it. Yeah, they don't even they don't have that much production for sure. Yeah, Rasika trying to uh, dive in here, doing a little bit of an attack. 
trying to reclaim that commander, I'm sure. Uh, well, do they manage it? No. It looks like the uh, his own commander, or their own commander, isn't going in. Going to be backing off after losing quite a few stouts there. Yeah, you do have the long range units back here, really making your life quite miserable. And with the Dragon's Claw as well, got some nice AoE. It's just a bad time all around. Bo Biden also up here, threatening to push out. Saddam has retaken the center as well, cruising being up here as well. If I say as well again, my head's going to explode. Uh, but yeah, this attack right here, not looking really good for the uh, cool color team. Smiley Face has really been great at holding on in the north. Um, Land Pickle <laughs> with a ton of grunts up there. I'd be scared to look at that on radar, but uh, you know, once you get into viewing range, that whole big army just dissolves into nothing. This army, though, much more formidable. Lots of maces, lots of rocket bots, even some T2 hounds from Bo Biden 15 minutes in. Starting to get those T2 units on the field. Even got some T2 Sheldons, Augers, Radar bots, you name it. Sorry, that was the same thing. <laughs> radar and Jammer bots as well. You don't really see maces a ton, so it's good to be seeing those. But yeah, Saddam's army just going ham. Harassed a little bit by Cruising Bean, but not much you can do about that. Um, will they be effective? Obviously, they're trying to grab these bases here. Sheldon's putting some damage down range. Will it be enough? Yeah, you really don't want those guys to get down to your 2-2 lab. But I think it's just going to be about over these maces. Once the fiends start coming out, blowing up, lighting stuff on fire. Yeah, not much those uh, maces can do about the T2 units. Not at all. All right, but the hounds out for Majiba, able to uh, take <laughs> take out that uh, high ground position there. Not even close. Not even close. Yeah, very nice volleys. <laughs> A little bit concentrated there. Yeah. Ooh, no constructor turrets going down as well. Hate to see that. A lot of metal investment just to be wasted. We do have some shell shockers back here for Lazy Boy. Oh wait, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> for Z guy, I was like, uh, is not the air player? What are they doing? In terms of air, um, does look like Axis has more fighters than Lazy Boy, um, although it's definitely comparable. I wouldn't be too worried about either side diving in. Again, no bombers, so that whole air power struggle right now doesn't really matter. I guess some line of sight is, is pretty nice, but that's going to be about the only advantage you have without any kind of bombers or shurikens or anything like that. Start of 8, T2, Hound, Ball, Army here for Smiles. Well, they do have to contend with Zadka's own hounds, as well as, of course, the massive grunt army that Land Pickle has amassed. I don't think any of those guys have any kills. Oh, they have six kills out of the 40 of them. <laughs> You'd love to see it. Big battle going on down here in the south. Very nice. Uh, looks like Commander's going to be going down for Bungiba. Got a little too aggressive with the Commander there. Going to be buying the dust, but I don't I mean... Yeah, 3,000 men on the field as well. Gonna be grabbing in the back line though. Stanky Bews, their commander, almost down as well. Desperately trying to fend against hounds, shell shockers, whistler, missile trucks, you name it. Um, doing their best to protect their base. Construction turrets going down though, no good. Oh, they actually just kill a hound with some construction aircraft as well. Just reclaimed his soul right out of them. Garbager really holding on down south here, mostly because nobody's doing anything. Which really means that Garbager, this. This is where you want to attack, right? I mean, there is some defenses here. T1 laser tower, but, I mean, there's a vehicle plant right there. Obviously, I'm not, I don't believe that they know about it. I'd be surprised if they did. Oh, my gosh. Player view. This is not, I've never seen that before. Okay, yeah, they, they don't know about it. So, it makes sense why they wouldn't attack. Even if they did, they might not. Uh, so, Rumble and Bombers from Axis here are going to be diving over Smile's base, taking out their advanced bot lab. And, uh, yeah, not looking too great. Imagine they took out some construction turrets with that. Going to be hampering Smile's production for sure. Um, T1 Bot Lab does get back up. Probably just make some construction, some reclaim. Yeah, this all makes sense. Uh, really, really good play from Axis, though. And, unfortunately, Lazy Boys just, they're too lazy <laughs> to get their fighters over to the north side of the map. Uh, honestly, not really their fault. They don't have enough fighters to do a huge patrol route, right? Um, they've been kind of keeping them in the center, which makes sense equidistant from you know all points of attack but yeah not going to be working out for them uh right then and there so that's going to be putting a bit of a halt on that northern aggression from smiles um <laughs> oh that looks like uh we don't have cruising being here slowing down at all rocket bots sheldons and then of course the radars and the radar jammers as well going to be demolishing this hound army from saddam oh saddam no axis flying some fighters over grabbing some vision there i'm sure Maybe even threatening just another bomber attack. You never know. And yeah, this attack is going pretty well. But I mean, it's going to peter out. There's not much you can do there. Sheldon's already pulled back. Rocketbots are being pulled back as well. Um, 
Now, what's going on here? Lazy Boy, I guess, just giving vision? Um, yeah, makes sense. Two vehicle plants up here uh, for Governor. Yeah, now two, man. And the fact that nothing is attacking out of here is super, super rough. Uh, Axis' planes going to respond to Lazy Boy's fighters. Lazy Boy's fighters, yeah, get mostly wiped. And uh, those fighters are continuing onwards because they have bombers right in the back. Going to be gunning for somebody's base. Oh, Garbager. Garbager, no. You need a more anti-air, brother. Yeah, you can never... You know, I always say, never trust an air player. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they did have some AA, to be fair. Bomb resistant batteries, some thistles, not enough to save their base. So, a lot going down in that bombing raid, though. Uh, not great there. And I'm sure there's even more to come. A few bombers still alive. Let me drop their last payloads. Or maybe they're just deciding to hang around. Looks like it's going to be the latter option. Yeah, not great for Garbager. Cutting their economy and their production down. They are definitely low on energy. Oh, actually, they're just managing to keep stable. Uh, but they're not going to be able to fund most of their energy converters. Yeah, down to 60%. They're only plus 20 metal. Not great. Although they're still on T1. Got a lot of uh, metal or energy converters for T1 when you're not an eco player. Interesting moves there. Some blitzes trying to make their way by for Governor. Not quite able to do it. Yeah, Governor has just been holding the line, it looks like nothing wrong with that they even have a oh yeah of course i was like where's their uh, plant it's right there uh the center kind of becoming a no man's land back in that world war one theme bo biden still just waiting out with these hounds right here which is always rough um obviously they don't have good vision i'm sure but um yeah they don't they just know their stuff over here um and since they don't have good vision they don't know that they have overwhelming superiority if they just decided to you know hit w walk forward a little bit Cruising Bean and Smiles also holding the line in the north up here. Huge gun army for Land Pickle. Kind of unfortunate, actually, they should not have attacked because this looked really bad on radar for Smiles. Yeah, that looks terrible on radar. But now that they know it's Grunts, you know, big deal. And they're also getting shot to pieces, which is more of a micro issue than a, uh, you know, tactics or strategical issue. Yep. No bueno. A lot of Mausers out here for Dervish. Dervish, I think... Um, I don't want to. I don't want to say it's an all. I think it's an all. They've been calling out a lot in chat, and also, um, yeah. I mean, Mausers are really, really great. And they have quite a few of them. Not something you normally see uh, a tier seven guy do or a uh, seven OS guy do, but you know, you never know. Um, I mean, this certainly looks like seven OS play. Unfortunately, uh, they're bombing their own guys. No bueno. No bueno. Starlight's out here for um, Rusika as well. Yeah, Starlight's just a fantastic unit. One of my favorite units. Just got that nice laser beam. They're just a mobile tachyon. I mean, it says it. It's right in the name. Mobile tachyon weapon. And that just means that they're really, really good. And uh, that also means that these vehicle plants from Governor are under attack. Yep, active attack. One goes down. I can't imagine the second is far behind it. Oh, no. They might not have vision, though. Oh, this cheeky little blitz. <laughs> He's fighting for all he's worth. But, uh, yeah, it doesn't go too far there. Second vehicle plant is down. Construction turrets trying to uh, waste metal to help themselves, but no, not quite. Sorry, not waste metal. Doesn't it? Doesn't do that. Why do I? Why would I lie? Yeah, very good attack here in the south. It's what I wanted to see really um, a lot earlier from uh, Garbager. Obviously, they don't really. They're not in the position to do it right now. Their economy kind of got wrecked. Although they're they're definitely building back, building back better. One might even say. Um, but yeah, it could have happened a little bit earlier, probably to more effect as well. But hey, Mausers from Dervishes and Starlight from Rizika able to just clear out the south here. And is anybody moving units in? Bo Biden's holding in the center. Um, not much these northern guys can do about the attack there. Um, yeah, Thor is coming down here. There we go. Thor from Benjiba going to be clearing out this stuff. And, you know, normally T3 units just awful against, um, you know, take spam and other stuff like that scout spam t1 unit spam stuff like that not the thor fantastic chaining aoe attack also high single target damage these mausers absolutely just getting wrecked there's no point in moving them back um because mausers can't shoot while they're running so uh yeah better just let them die 
live out their last moments in glory. Razorback also out here from Bungiba, so of course that gantry is out. Probably put that around the 21 minute mark or something like that. Um, yeah, Thor is just really, really, really good unit. Um, perhaps Armada's best T3 unit up there with the Titan. Razorback, decent as well. Kind of a Marauder-like unit. They're fast. They get the job done, but they're not going to stay in battle for too long against other uh, T3 units. Garbage's commander right here, maybe looking to D-gun. Although, uh, definitely going to be needing a cloak there pretty soon. There we go. There's the cloak. Um, they definitely can't maintain that cloak while moving. So, you're going to have to do something quick. Oh, the Razorback was in D-gun range. But, I think they're going to infer that Thor. Unfortunately, we're spotted. And, uh, yeah. Garbage's commander going down there. Razorback does go down as well. Uh, partly to the explosion. Probably probably to the starlights. Berserker and Stanky be out here as well with their commanders. Yeah, this Thor is a huge threat. Because A, there's no army, and B, I don't think anybody on the Cool Colors team has any T3 units. So the World War I trench lines have failed. It is now just full of chaos down here in the south. You're in the you're in the deserts of Syria fighting the Ottomans or something, I'm sure. Um, you know, some light maneuver warfare. Down to 60% this Thor. But uh, yeah, they're gonna it's gonna be able to hold on quite a bit longer. Oh my gosh, if it just got just get a little closer to these Mausers, that's so many Mausers dead. I think it is taking the path of retreat. Honestly, Rasika's calm would be taken out anyways. Nice D-gun there from our boy in blue. Fantastic cloak D-gun. In terms of the air war, I mean, it goes to Axis uncontested. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing about what Lazy Boy is producing that's going to be able to beat all those fighters. Thankfully, no bombers right now for Axis, but oh, it's only a moment of time before some more hailstorms come out. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, you know what hailstorms do to your car. It's like that, but to your base. Uh, very unfortunate, very unpleasant, and sometimes it even totals your car if the, uh, you know, ice balls are big enough. Got some uh, Grunts fan from Cruising Bean. Good to see units just shoot each other, although there's not a lot here to actually self-damage. Um, although, I think the Pawns and the, or the Grunts in themselves are a threat. There's just not a lot here to do damage at all. Some Recluses, maybe, able to kill a few of them there. Tons of Reclaim there. That is uh, not being reclaimed. Again, hate to see it. Sometimes people, yeah, okay, there we go. Governor, Governor reviving my spirits <laughs> with some reclaim bots. And to be honest, I forget all the time as well, right? I'm by no means perfect or even close, but uh, yeah, oh my gosh. Mouse are just being reclaimed there. No way, they get one. Oh, awesome. They might even get two. Yep. <laughs> the power of reclaim, folks. Ladies and gentlemen, we have two reclaim bots just, you know, taking their pick of the Mausers. Yeah, I think unfortunate uh, sight lines there led to their deaths. Commander trying to cloak. Doesn't quite work out for him, though. Let's go, Blue. Yeah, yeah, I think that was Zyka's commander, if I'm not mistaken, and I'm not. Oh, no. So sad, so sad. Yeah, we got some we got some hounds up here on the ridge, some Sheldons from Cruising Bean supporting them. Oh, my gosh. Bo Biden. Yeah, got to fire at this guy. Bo Biden has a huge army of hounds. 30 hounds in all. Unfortunately, they are really, really clumped up. They also got some sharpshooters in the back, though. Definitely want some radar units to provide some line of sight. Don't know where those guys are. Well, and there we go. Radar, bots, and jammers. Right as I was, uh, you know, talking about them. Right on cue, might we say. We got a lot of Wasp gunships out here for Axis. Again, Axis just winning uncontested the air war. Lazy Boy going to be flying some fighters over there. But, uh, yeah, not even close. Oh, my God. These are still T1 fighters against T2 fighters for Cortex. <laughs> and they have more of them. Yeah, Lazy Boy losing the air war is really, really tough. Um, yeah, those Wasps are just having the run of the field. Oh, a sneaky little T1 fighter there. Sonar playing as well. All in all, Axis is just doing a great job with the air war. Yeah, not even close, unfortunately. Uh, they were losing the air war in the beginning, I think. But yeah, now now that it's over, it's over. <laughs> I like how big the reclaim field is. Six, six and a half metal, somewhere in that big black box. Not entirely sure where it is. It's around there. Yeah. All right, here we go. The Hailstorm Bombers, as well as the Fighters, coming over for Axis. Oh my gosh. I didn't know planes were this deadly in world war one <laughs> when did they when did they patch world war one man oh my gosh no the aphis for garbage are gonna be going down this is like the second bombing run on garbage oh this one was much more effective though uh yeah really hate to see that go out i mean that's basically a player down i mean he can recover or they can recover in time but it's gonna take a while oh no the enemy air player <laughs> Getting damaged as well. I mean, yeah. Lazy Boys basically knocked out of the fight. They got their commander and some advanced solar collectors. Uh, fortunately, those hailstorms finally go down. Yeah, OP air for sure. Saddam, I couldn't have said it better, man. But, yeah, I mean, 
What can you do against such reckless hatred, right? Uh, maybe we should have built some more fighters. But yeah, I mean, I you would think after Garbager got wiped earlier <laughs> because Lazy Boy didn't have enough fighters, they might build some more anti-air, but yeah, they did not. And, you know, you can understand why. It's a really, really big drain on your economy that you might not even see value out of. But uh, it's always, always worth it. Never, never let yourself be tricked into thinking that the anti-air is not worth it because it is so much more cost effective than building fighters if you're not the air player. And also, you know, it's just really good. It's, it is just more cost effective uh, almost in every situation. If we cannot be on the resource tab, that'd be fantastic. Who hit that button? They should, they should stop doing that. Another Thor I hear from Pudgy, but yeah, absolutely just having the run of the field here. <laughs> Oh no, some bulls, yeah, not even, you think you're a tank, you think you're a tank until the Thor comes out, and then, eh, it's not so nice, this raw Thor is not cooking, this this Thor is cooking, I don't know what you're saying, gosh, spectators, can't stand spec. okay, <laughs> Thor gets D-gunned by a Smiley's commander who just made their way down south, actually they have two, I think they were gifted that one, uh, they also have one up in the north here, never mind, I must have been remembering incorrectly. Yeah, their commander's just down here in the south, taking a little vacation in the nice deserts of Arrakis. The greenest Arrakis has ever been, for sure. Also, probably the least least people that have ever lived in Arrakis. These are all robots. Some marauders uh, building up here for land pickle, but nothing super substantial. Not that marauders are bad, of course, but, I mean, they just don't have the firepower or the health of other T3 units, which makes sense. They're also much cheaper. Yeah, grunt spam. Finally, coming to an end as the welders are out in the field now. Saddam's welders. Oh, man. Forced to be reckoned with. No. Oh, gosh. And we got the hounds just pushing past the welders. I mean, I understand the hounds wanting to attack. Uh, but I think the welders should definitely be out on front so they can uh, clear out that spam there. We also have a, some thugs and some Sheldons out here for taxation and theft. You know, they're done in the center. They're done dealing with Joe Biden. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you think taxation is theft, then maybe, yeah, you wouldn't want to deal with Joe Biden. So they're going to be moving down south here, facing Governor and Punjiba. Thor out here from Punjiba, going to be clearing all this stuff up if a taxation isn't careful. We also got Dervish out here with some more Mausers. Man, Dervish loves those Mausers for sure. Um, yeah, wiping out some T2 Maxes. Interesting that Dervish isn't, you know, they're in the eco spot, but they're definitely not uh, the eco player for sure. You know, I think, yeah, L4 Hard is definitely, or Harl. Um, definitely got more eco there, even though they are. Oh, they're actually both. Yeah, interesting that both teams have their most inexperienced players in the back of the line. Normally, the thought process is quite the opposite, but it is it is not a solved issue for sure. Issue, that's a big word for it. It's not a solved debate at all. I, me personally, I think you put your lo less experienced players out in front. Um, unless your more experienced players would rather not. Oh, my God. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Smiley with another D gun on the Thor. The saga continues. That's at least two we have on camera. There might even have been more. I mean, it's so bad. That's so bad. Yeah, you need more spam down here in the south so that you can detect the commander for sure. Or even just have some cloak detection. I mean, cloak detection really is not that expensive. And it also covers quite a large range of the map. So I'm not entirely sure why it's not being built. Again, kind of a problem that you see all the way to the top of the leaderboards. Um, mostly because, again, beyond a reason, definitely not a solved game. We have really, really good players, uh, but they don't know everything, right? And especially, you know, when you focus on such a large macro, the micro can kind of escape you. So you're, you're like, oh yeah, I, ha I have a production of one Thor a minute, and you don't realize every <laughs> every Thor you send out is getting immediately degunned. Oh yeah, the South and the North both looking not great for the warm colored team. If we look at the stats, metal produced, who has produced the most metal? Uh, gonna be going to that warm colored team still. Uh, almost 150,000 more metal produced by the warm colored team than the Southern, or the cool colored team. And what are they doing with it? Who knows, getting degun, I guess. Yeah, I mean those floors eat up metal. I don't remember how much they cost exactly. If I could find a gantry, that would be just fantastic. Um, yeah, 9,000 metal for the Thors. <laughs> so every time you see Smiles D gun a Thor, that's 9,000 metal just down the drain. Uh, for reference, how many commanders is that? Like six or seven? Yeah. Ungodly. Ungodly. Air War still looking really, really bad for Lazy Boy. Thankfully, Smiles has started to produce their own 
uh, air units, some gunships, some fighters, some T2 fighters. It's good to see. Yeah, Axis just has so many, though. Is it even fair at this point? How many do they have? 131 Nighthawks. Yeah. It's a force to be reckoned with for sure. Rasika with some T3 units down here. Resurrected raises back. Again, guys. Resurrected bots. Super, super important there. Nice little Razorback that you normally would have had to build and transport all the way down. There we go. Smiles already getting some use out of their fighters there. Yeah, I mean, Smiles, I mean, expectedly, right? Carrying their team a little bit here in the latter stages of the game. But honestly, I think everybody's really doing their part quite well. I mean, even Dervish, right? You would see like a, a seven OS guy in the back line. You'd be like, that guy's not going to do anything. And you know what? He's out there with Mausers all the time just messing stuff up doing a fantastic job yeah everybody's doing great i don't really see a lot of toxic stuff in chat so i think i think everybody here is like my favorite person ever it's good to see oh no smiles out here with an <laughs> their commander out here cloaked uh okay this is this message is recent so they are spotted right and if we look oh they don't see it anymore yeah they must have seen it uh, some other time yeah it looks like they're going to be walking away. Maybe they flew a little too close to the sun there. And they don't intend on flying any higher. Back into another stalemate, it looks like. It's funny how barren this middle section is. Um, there is quite a bit of defense here for Joe Biden. Um, I'm going to keep saying Joe Biden instead of Bo Biden. I think it's funnier. <laughs> but, yeah, there's not a lot, as much defense here for the warm color or the cool color team. And I, I'm surprised that they're not attacking more. I mean, I understand attacking the center is objectively the worst place you get center units. But when the other flanks look like this, <laughs> I think maybe I would tell myself, oh, maybe I'll do it, right? Uh, Sharpshooter force out here for Smiles. How many kills they got? 39. Oh, my gosh. They're definitely uh, pulling their weight, that's for sure. How many of those are grunts, though? Who's to say? Uh, probably a decent amounts of those yeah gonna move in south to more valuable targets southern flank also looking just very very barren uh thor out here yeah oh my gosh never mind two thors out here i didn't notice um and then one down south okay so not quite so barren but again a place that i would definitely be wanting to push as well um if i can manage to get over the mountain railgun oh in a interesting position there just gonna be firing straight into the ground Happens to the best of us. Happens to the best of us. Fiends absolutely roasting that Razorback. That's what I'm talking about. Like, Razorbacks, they can't stay in battle that long, even against some other T2 units, um, which are, you know, of course, lower ranked than them. They just don't last too long. Railgun with a really, really nice shot into the uh, crowd, though. Oh, gosh. But I think both these T3 units are going to be going down if they're not careful. Axis. Oh, no. More Hailstorms for Axis. Uh, yeah. Fighters galore as well. Low again. Smiles has quite the fighter force as well. Lazy Boy trying to build up here too. And they do have, um, oh my gosh, still T1 fighters. What's happening? Okay. Yeah, I mean, I know they did get destroyed. They have an Aphis and not a T2 aircraft plant. Yeah, that's really unfortunate. I don't know, um, again, like how much they know about the game. But uh, yeah, dude, if, <laughs> I think seeing your, your air play with T1 fighters 36 minutes in the game would... Uh, it would make me kind of sad. I know, again, their base did get destroyed and they're a newer player, but still. It's a rough situation to be in for anybody. Thankfully, again, Smiles picking up the slack a little bit. Oh my gosh. I wonder how much, how many uh, Grunts Cruising Bean has created here. I mean, metric tons, right? Uh, unfortunately, the spam isn't getting anywhere. No units are hitting each other. They're getting some line to sight, though, I'm sure. It's worth it. It's worth it, for sure. Well, I don't know. Uh, if we look at the stats in terms of metal created. Oh, wait. Air War. Air War. Oh, better get those fighters out of there. Rasika has fighters as well. All right. Rasika and Lazy Boy. Scaring off Axis there. Smiles still continuing with their fighter force up top. Anyways, metal produced. Um, going to be, oh my gosh, just over a million for the warm color team. They're now, yeah, solidly over that one uh, 150,000 metal produced. Yeah, they're, so that means that they're producing more metal um, than they were when we last checked over the uh, Cool Color team. So, yeah, it is on the uh, Cool Color team to advance there for sure. Otherwise, they will be economically, uh, you know, dominated. And then you got to start worrying about the lol cannons if those are enabled. Uh, thankfully, there is a setting, you know, to disable them if, if players so choose. Unfortunately, I can't see uh the advanced settings that people choose to put in their game i can only see like you know the gameplay effects right like if you're producing legion units obviously you've produced 
you know, or you take the Legion setting, but I'm not sure, uh, you know, much more beyond that. Oh well. You know, a little quality of life stuff, it'll it'll be there eventually, right? Juno missiles just going ham here. You can always tell who's more experienced because they produce Juno missiles. Everybody else just thinks you're stupid. Um, me too. No, I'm kidding. Although, them all detonating in the same place is quite interesting. Yeah, I mean, they do, like, damage. <laughs> they do. They do, like, very, very little damage, right? And they're also not interceptable, but, yeah, I mean, definitely not worth producing if you're just looking for the damage aspect. Only really useful against that radar, the scouts, stuff like that. In terms of fighters, yeah, I'm actually wondering now. I think it's even. I think it's even. I mean, Lazy Boy, Rasika, and Smiles finally able to <laughs> knock out Axis out of the top air player spot. You know, Rasika and Smiles, they might they might be fighting on land and air, but you know they're contributing. Lazy Boy also doing their best to keep up. Yeah, in terms of raw numbers, I think the Cool Cooler team has more. Although, exactly how many of these fighters are T2? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm still seeing T1 fighters for uh, Rasika. I'm sure uh, Smiles has T1 fighters as well. Yeah, it looks like a mix, so. Who's to say? Who's to say? I can't do the math. If you're doing math in a recording, uh, I've heard it's bad luck. Yeah, I mean, this, look, No Man's Land. Just like World War One, guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, the Starlights as well as the rail guns up top here, really creating quite a nasty space to cross through for anybody. Also, there's a just a distinct lack of spam here. Uh, we do have some ticks coming out um, in a slow, you know, one unit stream for Masika, but not much more than that. Not compared to, uh, you know, Grunt's Allure up here for Cruising Bean. And honestly, yeah, again, with Junos, you're able to stop scout spam. Instead, of they have to use T1 Grunts and Pawns, which are more expensive and slower. Um, which is, yeah, just all, all the better for you, right? Oh my gosh. Yeah, Ticks looks like they're just providing, ra you know, radar scares, uh, for the warm color team, but, yeah, unfortunately for them, they can uh, see what units they're rating, so, yeah, those Ticks just, just taking on losses for a whole lot of nothing. A whole lot of nothing. Yeah, I mean, the cool, oh my gosh, cool color team very much has surpassed Axis in terms of air power. Guys, what I tell you, you gotta, you gotta watch out for your air power. Is Axis going to be curb stomped the way that Lazy Boy was twice? <laughs> Is Revenge going to feel so, so sweet? That's bad. Oh, indeed. Five Thors out here for L4 Harl and one down here. So that's six Thors in total just sitting here. Yeah, I mean, if you have five Thors, boom. Okay, this is scary, but that's where you bring in your anti-cloaking measures. Again, no anti-cloaking measures for any anybody that I'm seeing right now. It's just really... Uh, quite unfortunate. Uh, Hailstorms build up down here for Axis. 27 of them. Yeah, they could uh, definitely put in a beating if they so chose. Uh, a couple Thors up here for L4. Oh my gosh, L4 Harl as well. That means they have like eight Thors out in total. Um, Governor with another six. Oh my gosh, wait, no. L oh no, he just spread them out. <laughs> I was about to have an aneurysm. I was like, how many Thors does this guy have? They're none of them are attacking. Yeah, I mean, um, I wish I could just select El Elf. Oh gosh, I can't even say their name. I wish I could just select their Thors just to see how much damage they've done because I, I don't think they've done that much, which is really unfortunate. Um, obviously, they're scared of uh, you know commanders degunning them, but at some point you gotta just push on, man. Uh, three Thors up here for Land Pickle. Again, still nothing. Those hailstorms looking like they want to be bombing Mr. Smiles. Fighters coming in as well. Oh, look at all those Juno missiles launching. And yeah, will they be able to get through? Oh my gosh, just a mess of fighters, land-based AA, all of it, just culminating in the in the most brutal air war you've ever seen in your life. I don't think those, yeah, bomber stack yuck is uh, that's that's for sure. Um, yeah, if you stack airplanes and bombers, they don't really have physical models; so they can just like stack on top of each other, and then uh, stuff like flak or even just single AA missiles, they just have a, enough. AOE to be able to just wipe out that stack um, as easy if you you just put a couple bombers in there so that's uh, quite unfortunate catalyst being up built up here by axis that's really really good um, it was spotted by those fighters now I don't know if any players saw it um, yeah but it was definitely seen Bo Biden oh my gosh Bo Biden just, just has a ton of stuff out here I think they're really the dark horse of this game you haven't seen them make like a ton of like plays but they've be definitely been doing damage right all right, fighters out here, um, just looking. Oh my gosh, 
Holy cow. I don't even know. Okay, so obviously the Aces blew up, but I didn't see any bombers in there. There must have been. Oh, okay, there we go. I see some atomic bombers here. Yeah, okay, so atomic bombers for Smiley. I haven't even seen. That's how sneaky they were. Making a mess of Axis's base. And looks like they're also going to be detonating Punjiba's base as well. And I think that is the GG for the warm color team. How quick that uh, house of cards fell down. It is um, actually quite impressive. But yeah, one of the things about Bar, you, sometimes your legs can just get kicked out right from under you. Um, and that is GG. Yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy. Fantastic game. Um, you know, right up to the wire there, right up to the end. Uh, in terms of statistics, who produced more metal? I mean, it was still the warm color team. They just didn't use it in a manner that was as effective as the cool color team did. Um, really fantastic. I also really like the stat screen, even more than the graph screen, if I'm going to be honest. All right. So, yeah. Um, in terms of metal use, it's going to be Smiley here with a uh, second from Bo Biden. Again, the dark horse guy um, really put in a lot of effort there, although it just didn't show up you know, on the battles that I was spectating. Everybody else falling in the line as well. In terms of damage dealt, I mean, has to go to Smiley as well. Right up at the end there. But <laughs> before them, it was Bo Biden again. Um, and also Punjiba with a third place there. So I hope you guys did enjoy. Uh, just a fantastic game. Really close. Great plays from both sides. Uh, yeah, hope you do have a great day. See you later. Adios.